Robert Lawrence is one of the heroes of Shrewsbury, one of the unknown heroes. He hasn't really been given the credit he deserves because he turned Shrewsbury uh, from a border town into a town that was really was at the centre of things. He managed to persuade the London to um, Dublin mail coach to call in via Shrewsbury rather than Chester. 1780, he took over the ownership of the Lion Hotel which meant that he brought the Royal Mail and the stagecoaches through the Lion on the way through Wales and Anglesey across to Ireland. So he brought untold wealth and really put it on the map. In 1730, we have on record that it took three ladies, five gentlemen and six servants 12 days to travel from Shrewsbury to London in 1730. By 1820, that had been reduced to 16 hours. In 1730, the roads were very, very poor, lots and lots of potholes, but the toll gates and the tolls had improved the transport service. The gentry had their own coaches, so they wouldn't. It was very much the travelling professional class, the salesmen, the professionals. Interesting, when one of the stagecoaches crashed, the record show that it had the Belgium ambassador on board and his valet and the Sardinian ambassador and his valet on board and a surgeon from Gloucester. So they're the sort of people that travelled, quite amazing, who actually travelled around Britain in the 19th century. To go from Shrewsbury to London, it was um, a pound if you sat inside but only 50 pence or 10 shillings if you sat on top and if you sat on top you had all sorts of weather and there's one story of a stagecoach that arrived at Bath and the uh, stagecoach owner wondered why the three guests didn't get off from the top of the stagecoach in one December lunchtime and then when he called them and tried to rouse them he found they'd frozen to, de to death on the way and so uh, it really was cold. And of course the annoying thing for the people inside that when they got cold, the people on top, they'd stamp their feet and try and keep warm and do everything possible. So it wasn't much fun if you were paying the extra rate to sit in the carriage because you had this cacophony of noise coming from the ceiling all the time. There were the highwaymen and um, that was still, there are reports of people being held up and robbed many, many times. Even to the point that in the first few years of the stagecoach era they'd have young boys actually running the stagecoach but it got such a problem that on the long distances like to London they'd used to use ex-professional soldiers actually as guards with their guns to make sure it wasn't robbed so stagecoach highwaymen was a big problem certainly. 1820 to 18 mid 1830s Sam Hayward drove the stagecoach and he was renowned he was renowned for many things one his punctuality he was never more than 10 minutes late ever in any of his journeys and it is said that if um, the market clock showed a difference to Sam Hayward's arrival time it was presumed the market clock was wrong not Sam Hayward he was an amazing person he didn't talk to people um, one of his um, travellers said to him, Are you dumb man? What ails you? And Sam replied, Can't talk and drive a stagecoach. So he would just concentrate on the job in hand and he, he was so insistent on getting the stagecoach on time that he wouldn't let anybody off. A solicitor once, a young solicitor, uh, said at the bottom of Wild Cop, he was a bit worried how nervous and how fast he was going up the hill, said, uh, Could I get off now? Sam Hayward said, you be damned, and drove straight up Wild Cop, and this poor solicitor had a fright because Sam Hayward would draw in a big circle and come straight through the narrow entrance without stopping, and for somebody on top of the stagecoach to actually suddenly do full circle and come through this narrow gap, it was quite an interesting experience. <music> 